last week, I'm pretty sure it was this last week on Tuesday night, Wednesday early morning, I went out, it was trash night, it had been raining, but it just finally stopped and I went out for a nice walk, I needed a nice walk anyhow, my feet were, my foot was still swollen, and it still is now. I went out for this walk without taking any recycling because it had been raining, I didn't want to put them out in the wet, even though everybody else has. I just thought I'd take a walk around and I guess I was checking to see that house that had thrown out the baby carriage and the vacuum cleaner and the stereo system. Maybe they had more stuff to throw out this week. And that was, I was on that street that I was walking down it toward Main Street and I remember having this thought. And it made me think of Hamlet. I remember thinking, well, the qu look what the question is what one of the questions is and it made me think of to be or not to be and I was thinking to be or not to be that is the question well it's not the only question there are other questions sometimes even more significant than to be or not to be more specific questions and I think I just finally remembered what that question had been it wasn't all that fantastic but it was valid I think the question I was thinking was the question is where are you this is a question that we ask throughout our lives, particularly throughout our dreams, but our, our minds are constantly asking this from the time we're born, I think, to the time we die. And it, it does get explored in, in dreams, particularly the question, where am I? Where am I? And I, I think I, that was what I was thinking because I was walking down the street, there it is, like three in the morning, middle of the night, perfectly still and calm and peaceful, and not too dark. The street lights kept it fairly well illuminated, but it still was nighttime, and this made me think of how this this is ongoing sensation and question that, especially in dreams, you find yourself walking down or floating down or driving down. Somehow you're down some street, some place that you don't consciously recall when you wake up having ever been to that specific place but sometimes they seem so specific it seems very it's like why would my how why let alone how would my mind construct such complete uh, streets neighborhoods landscapes how and why whereas on the other hand there's the sensation that possibly sometimes in our dreams we're actually glimpsing an experience that we will be in number of years in the future so you're walking down some street you've never seen before and yet everything seems very specific and detailed in your dream and you're partly thinking in your dream I, I know this isn't real I know this is a dream but look at the amazing detail on <laughs> look at the amazing detail and the specificness like sometimes I maybe even can I'm looking at a house and I'm walking by and I'm trying to concentrate on seeing the house number on their door so I can try to remember it when I wake up and think oh I remember what it was number 635 and it was a white house and blah 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 I'm trying to just just to jot it down just to remember remember it just so maybe one day I'll actually find myself in that place and say yeah I remember I, I wrote it down I, I saw this place I really did anyhow I think the thought I had last week was as I was walking down that street in the middle of the night and it's sort of a twilight zone of quietness and uh, nobody's around everybody was asleep in bed away and it was kind of like a dream experience even though I was awake it was kind of like in your dreams you will wake walk down some sort of street that's ordinarily very busy but it's all quiet and peaceful and silent in your dream and it, so it occurred to me I think at that point I was thinking one of the main questions that we have through our lives is where am I? We're trying to, our brains are trying to under grasp the concept of, of place, the concept of place, and that's something we deal with our whole lives. Whereas to be or not to be is something usually most people, if they deal with that question at all, it's only very briefly at certain points of, low points of suicide in which they either decide to uh, decide it's not worth killing yourself or they go and decide to kill themselves and that's the end of the questioning 
to be or not to be. But the question of where am I is an ongoing question that, that we as a species are constantly asking ourselves. We, we as a species, on this, we on this planet, on this planet, we are never in the same place, even a split second later. The, the, the speed at which the planet Earth is hurtling through space at the s while at the same time rotating on its axis and amazingly its axis and amazingly s quickly um, means that we're never we're always constantly on the move we're constantly on a roller coaster or on a, on a train through space we're never s stopped at a station we never settled and s settled in at, at one place where the the motion has stopped and the momentum is in continuous. It's constantly whir whir and spin spin, whoosh whoosh. We're spinning through space and we're the Earth is rotating about a thousand miles an hour on its axis, its north south axis. And you know this because the circumference of the Earth is approximately twenty four thousand miles at the at the equator. Because the Earth is approximately 8,000 miles in diameter, and the 8,000 times pi comes out to about 24,000 mile circumference, and we have 24 hours in a day, so that means that each hour we're spinning around a thousand miles, a thousand miles an hour. So we're constantly spinning around a thousand miles an hour, and when you check out, when you work out how fast that is per second, it's like 20 miles per second or something. So where we were a second ago, where you were a second ago, halfway through the the last word that you just heard me say, was 20 miles away from where you are at the moment that you stop to think about where you are. And in the time it takes to even say the sentence, you're hundreds of miles away from where you were when the sentence began. And then, that's just the rotation of the Earth on its axis. And then there's the amount of movement of the Earth around in orbit of the Sun. And that's immense. That's huge. It's about a um, over half a billion miles about half, because the um, distance from the sun to the earth is about 90 million miles, making the diameter, uh, making the, yeah, so that's the radi the radius, so that would be the radius of a circle at which the sun, the sun is at the center of that circle and the earth is at the circumference of that circle. The distance from the earth to the sun is the diameter, <laughs> is the radius of that circle and twice that radius distance is the diameter. So the diameter of, of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, if it were, we know it's not a perfect circle, but it's approximately, if it were a circle, the diameter would be about 180 million miles and 180 million times pi comes out to about 600 million miles circumference and that's how far the earth travels each year 600 million miles in 365 days so it's about one and a half million miles per day that the earth spins in orbit of the sun one and a half million miles per day and that would be about half a million miles no <coughs> about 50,000 or 60,000 miles per hour. We are moving about 60,000 miles per hour in our orbit around the Sun and that is about 10 times about about 10 times the diameter of the Earth. So each hour the Earth moves about 10 times its own its own size, its own diameter its own width. The Earth moves about ten times the distance of its own a line going straight through it each hour. <laughs> each day ten times the 
Each day we the earth moves like over 200 times its own size. That's how fucking fast we are orbiting around the sun and at the same time we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. So you never at this we're never ever ever even in the time even in the moment that you try to think about even the thought of the thought even the thought of saying the words of beginning this the thought of b this choosing the first word of your sentence to express the thought you've already moved an incredible amount of distance through space we are never in one place and yet we have the, the illusion through the sense of gravity through our sense of um, perspective of being on the surface of the planet we have this sense of place the sense that we are on a stable firm not moving place and that when we go out for a walk and you walk th four blocks down the street the distance that you have traveled is four blocks when in fact you've traveled you've traveled more than that in the blink of the eye that it takes just to even think of putting your foot in front of you to take the first step you traveled much more than that in that t amount of time but we have the illusion that, oh, I took off a walk for four blocks, and that's the distance I travel is four blocks. you traveling thousands of miles. <laughs> so there's the question, I believe, is that what I was thought of on Tuesday night and then couldn't recall. I think it was that simple question. Where are we? Where are we? So we need to, we have the questions of who are we? Where are we? What are we? What are we doing? Why are we doing it? These are the questions. And people, it's sort of become, a, it's a cliche in our culture to say to be or not to be, that is the question. But that is not really the main question that we ask continually through our existence, constantly. Our subconscious exists questioning it, asking it, whether or not we consciously ask it or not. All these questions, who am I? Where am I? What am I? Why? Why is it happening? Why is this story? What's the purpose? And occasionally, how? How, how can I change the story? How can I deal with my dealing with the story and my experience? How, how can I change my ap approach toward it? Mm, that might be, and that might be a clue to the actual kind of question that I was thinking and not being able to remember that thinking that my question had seemed important because I think it's like along the lines of that which it might have been that these questions that we have and we don't ask people ask all kinds of ridiculous absurd questions they ask questions like well what if we are all what if it, you know aliens this or that what if we are all just um virtual realities in the matrix we're just somebody's dream we're just a dream of some giant being we are just computer generated beings in some giant matrix and my thing my attitude is what if it's not what if that's all just delusionary which it seems anyhow delusional to, to, to imagine that you're not you that you're not what you are but you're some other flaky notion that you're not what you are and that, you're just, that it's a cyber space reality and blah 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 yeah, but what if that's not true what if you are in fact what you are for the most part then the question becomes the real questions that we've always asked long before there were computers to give people these ridiculous notions of we're living in a matrix or, s or something what people have always had to ask is the questions of My, my, my perceptions, how real are my perceptions? It's a similar question, but not quite the same. That presuming that my perceptions are real, that I am here, that I am me, I am what I am, that I, that I am the f flesh and blood, that I, f physical being that I perceive myself as being, the question remains, what is it all about? What does it really mean? What is the real significance of it? We think of ourselves as being some kind of a permanent thing. We say, I have a name, I have an address, I was born on this date. 
I'm this many years old and I continue his photographs of me when I was through all these years of my life and I'm this ongoing being but the realities of our existence are often very different there are many other questions for us to really ponder for instance I mean you we're, we're a constant stream of flow even even when you accept your physical reality your physical substance it's not a stable substance it's a constant flow of physical matter through your field of energy that converts that matter into the energy which is you which continues to convert and if you don't continue to t intake more physical matter to be to be converted into the being that, uh, that you think of as your permanent self then that permanent self will cease to function and cease very soon to exist. When you die of starvation or you suffocate from not having an inflow of oxygen for even a very, very, very brief time, even just a matter of seconds, can end your life through asphyxiation. Uh, you know, at most, a couple minutes, at the most that the average person can manage to s remain alive in a state of asphyxiation without more air coming in and air, the expired air being able to go out. For most of us, it, the absolute maximum is a couple minutes, and then we're gone. So we're a constant stream. You try to dam up that stream, and it destroys it immediately. And these are the kind of real <laughs> questions that we really need to face, and we have always have and always will. Accepting that you are essentially the physical, that you're not that crazy, that you're not that crazy that your perceptions are that much of an illusion, that when you see yourself picking up an object and feel the weight of that object, that it's not just a virtual thing in a computer, but you really are picking that thing up and you are seeing it and you are feeling its weight and you are moving it. Even so, the question remains and continues to be to understand even so how, how false these impressions are of what our existence really essentially is. Because even that, our existence is a conversion of matter into energy and energy back into matter. And we don't exist just as a, like a, like a rock, like a, like a hammer. You've got a hammer that's sitting there, and there it is, and, it's, and it just seems essentially to be stable, to be what it is. It doesn't need to breathe. It doesn't need to eat. It remains a hammer day after day, no matter how much movement there may actually be on the subatomic level. It still appears to s be a stable hammer to us, but we ourselves are not this way. We ourselves are this constant flow of blood fluid through every part of our body going back in every direction in and out constantly. We are this constant, like a traffic flow. If you see an a, a image of a highway and there's all this traffic flowing and it looks like the same thing, like hour after hour the, the headlights are white and the taillights are red and it just looks like this constant, um, this flow that's, that's a constant, but it's always different cars. It's always different people in those cars going by you, and yes, it, it, yet it forms this seeming continuity of of being the same thing flowing, but it's not the same thing. And that's, that's how we are, just like a river or a little brook flowing under a bridge. It looks like the same brook, looks like the same water, but it's not the same water molecules from one second to the next. And an hour later, the stream looks the same, and it looks like it's flowing in the same patterns. But it's a completely different set of water that you were s than that which you would have seen an hour earlier or a day earlier or a month earlier on that same bridge. And so are human beings. We are like that water flowing under a bridge. We are not the same water flowing that we were an hour ago or five minutes ago or will be tomorrow. So even discounting this whole matrix n nonsense, about we're not even real, even recognizing your own reality, your own physical reality, it's not a stable reality, and we have to wonder and ask ourselves, who and what am I? So I, I hope that was the question that I was thinking last week, and I hope I generally got the 
drift of the thought, but I, there might have been a little bit more to it. I think there was a little bit more to it. It was like people ask, spend their lives asking themselves these ridiculous questions that based mostly on fantasy. Well, what if aliens are doing this? And what if they're not? And my feelings is, feelings are, you generally, what if, what if that's bullshit? You know, people spend so much time asking themselves questions, what if this, what if that? And yet they seem to avoid asking themselves the reverse side of the question, what if it's just bullshit and uh, I'm just playing a little game with my mind of, of, of seeing how delusional I can imagine myself being? What if it's not, what if you're just wasting your time asking these ridiculous questions when the real reality is right in your face and that you turn away from and say, oh no, I'm not gonna, we're not going to waste our time asking these questions like that because that's, that's a closed-minded perception of, of existence. It's closed-minded to say that there aren't aliens. It's closed-minded to say that we're not just creatures in a computer generated creatures in, a, in some kind of computer matrix that were actually real. That's closed minded. Well, maybe it's more closed minded to close your mind off and not not face these questions as most likely the most real answers to the situation. But that's what people do. They close their minds off to what they don't want to have to accept as real. So, to be or not to be and whatever other questions. 